the OECD and um, the FATF, the Financial Action Task Force, uh, two of these international organizations wrote papers um, saying that Bitcoin is interesting, but it will never go anywhere. Um, the OECD mm. specifically said uh, Bitcoin will never become an alternative to legal tender um, because governments can't make taxes payable in Bitcoin because it's impossible to track. I personally think that's a positive, um, but this OECD yeah. paper uh, clearly uh, wanted to paint that as a negative, and the FATF paper uh, was basically just a big uh, warning to governments that uh, Bitcoin poses a very serious threat to them, and so that they should uh, you know, try to get rid of it at all costs, is basically what the paper said. And so that you know that's some pretty negative uh, international news. So it's good that at least in um, the United States it's getting some positivity. Yeah, yeah. The United States is actually one of the countries that has warmed up to Bitcoin the most, to the surprise of a lot of people. This started back in November when the Senate hearing first happened, and politicians actually like the idea a lot with uh, lower transaction fees, and they just don't want people to commit crime on the network. But yeah, California, other states are doing it. Uh, the U.S. government has, you know, tenuous relationship with it. They actually recognize it as something valuable, at least. But um, going back to the OECD thing, um, do you do you, do you think that it will actually convince governments to to try and have a more hostile stance towards Bitcoin? Do you think it actually has clout in the political um. stage? I don't think it would encourage them to be any more negative towards it than they already are, because you know there there are several countries. China, in particular, has outright banned it, and um, mm -hmm. and uh, the European Central Bank, which obviously represents the entire continent of Europe, basically, um, or everyone in the EU, which is you know a big chunk of Europe, um, they've said Bitcoin is bad. Um, Argentina, you know. Uh, passively threatened everyone in uh, its country that uses Bitcoin by reminding them that using Bitcoin violates their legal tender laws, so they should be cautious with that. So, uh, you know, governments around the world are pretty negative towards it. Um, yeah. But I think these, like, international economics institutions Force these governments' beliefs uh, and actions in trying to discourage its use, but um, ultimately, what the governments think about it doesn't matter. It's whether or not the individuals use it, and I don't right. think papers like this are really affecting those uh, those people's opinions. Yeah, yeah. Most people don't really care, and most of the people actually reading those t those kinds of papers that come out are people like us who are already involved in Bitcoin, and we're already. Uh, you know, trading it and, and investing with it and, and paying people with it and getting payments with it, like, we're not going to listen to that paper anyway. It's just kind of like an intellectual, uh, you know, interesting thing to read about and kind of toy with. But it's not going to... I would be personally surprised if governments start uh, being more hostile towards Bitcoin, thanks to yeah, that. Yeah, and, and like I said, in these, in these two papers, the, th the things that these two organizations uh, highlighted as negatives... Uh, they're actually things that a lot of people in the Bitcoin community uh, see as positives in mm -hmm. Bitcoin. So, you know, most of the people in the Bitcoin community, I know, me personally, don't even take papers like this seriously. In, in my opinion, like the original point of governments and such is to have a public pool of funds that everyone pays taxes into. And then from that, you can do public goods, build stuff that everyone uses out of that. But now with Bitcoin, uh, we we have ways for people to easily voluntarily uh, donate their own money to a public cause. Crowdfunding sites started up a couple years ago, but now we have Bitcoin. It's super easy for people to contribute funds publicly. And that's what Mike Hearn's Lighthouse is trying to do as well. Um, create a way for pe people to easily donate funds uh, to a public good. But governments... Like they're they're out of control. They they spend too much money on military, U.S. government specifically, 
and that's not really what people want to fund anymore with their hard-earned dollars. So that's why they're kind of afraid they're going to lose their influence to Bitcoin. Yeah, and I think I think uh, personally that uh, voluntary transactions are much more uh, efficient way to provide public goods like roads and electricity and things like that. Yeah. Um, because also it, it subjects these uh, public goods to um, the innovation of the free market. And so you you won't have things like this like terribly outdated electrical grid that we have. Uh, you know, we, we would have uh, self-sustaining decentralized electricity uh, that is like it's, it's invulnerable to many of the many things that can take our electric grid out. And... Um, uh, I think that if private companies actually owned the roads, they would be a lot better. Yeah, I just want to point out that I live in, in a state that has one of the highest, if not the highest, gas taxes in the country, and our roads are awful. <laughs> huh. And uh, so, okay. so obviously, uh, we don't have a funding problem because we get we we have some of the highest funding for roads in the country, and yet we have some of the worst roads I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so yeah, I think Bitcoin is a step towards creating a more voluntary society uh, where public goods are are treated more like um, more like functions or products of the of uh, private enterprise, and so they'll be provided much more efficiently and at a much higher quality, and pro- yeah. most more than likely at a lower price. Yeah, I mean, you would. I I I'm surprised that the government um, hasn't you know, gone more in the direction towards having uh, private ownership of some public resources. Um, I mean, the government's so in bed with corporations already. Uh, why haven't they, you know, let let corporations and businesses uh, improve on roads and parks and such um, for for a price? I don't know. Maybe, maybe they, they're just paralyzed or something and they, they're too scared to lose their influence already. Yeah, um... I just I read an article about the city, I think it was in Georgia. Um, the city government actually passed a bill uh, some amount of years ago to privatize the entire city, and they they actually they actually sold all of the public services to one company, and um, wow. And if the and if the people of that city were dissatisfied with the services of that company they could vote to fire that company and hire a new company to take over. Wow, and, interesting. Um, and apparently everybody loves it. Like, er, like, like uh, the quality of life has improved so much since they let this private uh, enterprise take over. Wow. Now, that, that's not really the, the system I'm advocating because that's basically you know trading a government monopoly for a private monopoly, uh-huh. which is not really free enterprise. But... Um, it's it's proof that when uh, that private companies that provide goods and services, uh, it it's proof that these types of companies are held accountable much more so than governments, and they provide better products. 